Hello and welcome to a Cloud Developer Channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you a tool called Taurus. Taurus is something that I learned about when I was researching into the usage of JMeter for load testing of my application. And it's a tool that allows you to actually use JMeter as one of the execution engines in order to perform your load testing. And um, it seems to fit uh, pretty well into a developer type of a, a lifecycle where it gives you a quick and easy way to write some tests be able to execute them as you're doing your development, be, to be able to actually get some metrics without uh, doing too much UI type of work. So I'll show you real quick on how it can be used. Now, uh, if you want to download it, you can simply go to gettours.org and uh, you'll get to a homepage where it will show you a 10 minute intro video, which I think is a pretty good starting point. And then uh, it gives you a basic set of instructions on how to actually install it uh, using pip. Pip is actually a Python uh, package management tool. Uh, if you have that installed, you can go ahead and use it. If you don't, there's actually a way to get it installed uh, using an installer. And uh, because I'm actually running on Windows, I'm going to actually be downloading it and installing it using a Windows installer. So you just click on this installation link and here under Windows, it will give you a couple of options. One of those options is actually using this installer, which actually comes in uh, pre-built and pre-packaged with Python, uh, Python Launcher, and Taurus itself. So you basically just run the installer and it does everything for you. Or you can go ahead and uh, manually install it and it gives you a few instructions of how to do that as well. And it also gives you instructions on how to do it on Mac OS and Linux as well. So, but because I'm doing it on Windows, I'll just uh, stick with Windows. And uh, I already have the installer downloaded, so let me just go to my desktop and go ahead and run this here. I'll go ahead and uh, choose uh, the normal options that I would choose. I typically put software on D drive. And then I'll let it go ahead and actually um, install all of the components that it needs. Once it's done, uh, we'll get back in and I'll show you how to actually use it. Okay, so as you can see, it installed. And now, depending on if you already had certain packages installed, it might take a little longer. But in my case, I already um, had some of the packages available to me. So it just installed Python and uh, deployed Taurus as well. So I'll go ahead and click Finish. And then uh, what you can do is uh, just open up Command Prompt or PowerShell. So let me do that. And um, you can check to see if it's installed by simply typing in VZT and then pressing enter and uh, you can see that it gives you some information about the CLI tool which in this case it uh, has version 1.10.0 installed and it uh, exits out and it also tells us that um, it created a folder but there's nothing to execute and that's why it exited out with a exit code of 1 so but at least now we know that the tool is installed and ready for us to start using I'll go ahead and close this. And uh, what I'm going to show you is uh, the JMeter test that we actually had before. In our prior uh, videos that I recorded, I showed you how to actually set up a, a quick test for our test application. And all it does basically is uh, it takes you to the home page, it takes you to the prof profile page, tries to log in uh, by doing an HTTP post with username and password, go into the UI page, um, and then log in out. So if we go to our application that is uh, hosted in our uh, service fabric cluster you'll see this application so we go to the home page click profile log in uh, and then uh, we log out as well so we're gonna uh, run through this example and i'll show you two specific scenarios of how do you can use uh, taurus uh, depending on what's available to you already so the first thing i'm going to show you is since i already have this um, jmeter test created I'll show you how to actually launch from Taurus this particular JMeter test as well. And it will give you that um, that view, that quick little dashboard that Taurus comes with, which I think is pretty neat. And so what I'm going to do here real quick is I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. And it's already open to the folder that I have uh, created in the past. And you can see I have the login page demo uh, JMX file, which is that jmeter test file and it has all the settings basically it's an xml definition of everything that is in that test which i'll go ahead and close and then uh, what you'll see uh, here is i have a home yml 
um, that's just something I called it. And basically, this is what a J meter um, type of a, a torus test actually looks like. So, uh, which you'll see, um, it starts with execution. Um, basically, that's uh, telling uh, it's configuring some of the basic settings of Torus, uh, telling it to uh, execute 50 user uh, threads. It uh, tells it to run for a minute. It tells it to ramp up for five seconds. And then it actually references the particular scenarios that you want to execute. So in my particular case, I'm pointing to a login script scenario. And here you'll see the actual scenario is listed. So you'll see that the names actually match. So uh, it will try to execute this login script. And all I'm doing here is I'm just actually pointing it directly to the script where I, uh, basically the, the script that I want to execute. And uh, it's called login page demo JMX, which is actually in the same folder. And then um, I give it some default settings that are documented on the Taurus's website. And they are the reporting modules for final statistics, which basically show you information in the console itself for uh, the percentiles uh, of the uh, responses that come back. And then uh, the console module, which basically outputs uh, some information on the screen for you. The other thing that uh, I have specified here is the actual override of the JMeter module. If you don't specify it like this, basically it will attempt to download the latest version of JMeter and put it in a folder where it's accessible to Taurus and then execute it from there. But in my case, I already have JMeter downloaded, so I'll just point it on Windows to a specific uh, bash file that starts up JMeter application itself. And then the check interval I'm setting to one second. Basically, this is the refresh rate of the console that shows up for JMeter. Uh, or, or I should say uh, Taurus, not JMeter. And then uh, default executor is set to JMeter, so it uh, starts executing JMeter by default. And then the provisioning setting. Now, uh, all I have to do in order to actually run this is I'll just type in BZT in, um, in the console window, and then I'll point it to home YML file. And as soon as I press enter, it will start executing, and you can see that the console came up. And what we're going to see now is some output. So since I specified up to uh, 50 concurrent users, you'll see the users are ramping up the different threads. And you'll see a few different metrics. Uh, first of all, you'll see the hits per second here on the left and uh, see how many failures you have. And so far, we have zero. Then we see the average response times. Um, and then we'll see latency and connectivity information. now. We don't actually have um, any information outputting for connectivity because it's just too too fast. And um, also, you'll see the total execution time as well as other statistics like the latest interval statistics, the cumulative statistics, uh, as well as the actual um, tests that are executing. And this is uh, really helpful if you're doing development and then you make a code change. And then you do, once you deploy it, you want to do a quick test to make sure that everything is working correctly. Um, and it also shows you, you know, by sent, received, uh, and some disk information from the machine itself uh, that you're actually testing against. And then once the actual test completes, you'll see the actual console statistics. And this is what the final stats uh, reporting module does. It will basically tell you that uh, the, the amount of samples that, that got executed is 11,840. Uh, how many failures you had in terms of percentages, and then it will show you um, average times uh, and then you know, total times, the latency information, and the percentiles, as well as the test duration time itself. So this is just kind of a, a quick and dirty uh, execution of this particular Taurus uh, test. Now, uh, you might say, well, why would I use something like this? Well, the nice thing about using Taurus in this manner is that it allows you to just quickly uh, point to something that you already have. But I think the main benefit of Taurus is being able to actually write your own script um, to be able to actually start as you develop your application uh, doing BDD style uh, or test driven style, TDD style development. Um, you can actually start writing your tests and uh, without really having to click a whole bunch of buttons in the user interface that you would have in JMeter. 
So in a prior video, you saw us actually doing a lot of recording and then adjustments. But what if you just simply want to do a simple get or a simple post with a couple of form parameters being sent in? You can uh, do it very quickly with something like Taurus. And uh, let me show you an example of what that kind of a script looks like. So we'll go to the login script. And again, uh, it's pretty straightforward. It starts with an execution. We define the concurrency, ramp up time, execution duration, and the scenario that we want to run. And then here, this is where um, I took the script that we uh, built here in uh, JMeter UI. And then I just kind of replicated or simulated a, a simpler version of that, but it still does a similar type of testing. Where basically uh, we start off uh, the test by defining whether we want to retrieve the resources. So things like uh, image files, CSS files, things like that. And then we tell it uh, whether we want to store the information in cache or not. Store the information in a cookie. This is where I set it to true. So that since we're actually logging in and we're using cookies, we want to store the cookie. Then we define the default address that's going to be uh, used across all of the requests in our test. Then we define the headers, and the headers actually uh, pulled out from one of our uh, pre-recorded sessions. So I mean, here I just basically selected all of them, uh, copied them by doing Control C. And then when you uh, paste them in, they show up like this uh, with some spaces. So I just had to basically reformat a little bit to say this is the actual header, uh, colon, and then space. And then in single quotes, I would put the value that was actually uh, pasted in, in this file. And then once I put those headers, I just needed to define some of the requests. This is where I think, you know, Taurus uh, actually shines. And what you can do is, let's say you're doing a basic get. Um, and that's all you care about. You don't care about doing any validation. You just want to make sure that the request succeeds. So all you have to do literally is uh, create this request section here uh, and then uh, with a dash space and then you give it the URL you actually want to test that gets appended to the default address itself. Once you do that, basically that executes that particular request. And then you can see I'm going to the home page and then I'm going to the profile page and then the uh, last thing that I'm doing here as a test is I'm actually pointing to a URL and this URL is actually the login uh, page URL and it's doing a post. Now all I have to do is just specify the URL, method type is post, and then I'm specifying the body that I want to uh, actually submit as part of the post request. So I'll uh, quickly go take a look on my website, what is the actual form look like. So if I just right click, go to inspect, and then you can see that the name um, is actually called username and then the password field is password. So I'm going to just simply type in those uh, parameters here by saying this is the actual field I want to submit. And then the value is going to be tough. The password is going to be test. And then the last thing I'm going to be doing is specifying the assertion. And what this is actually doing is, again, similar to how we did in JMeter. Let me bring that up here. Inside of our login uh, request, we did a response assertion. And what this was doing is actually making sure that the, uh, a particular text a string was actually available in a response. And that is the ASP.NET Core.Cookie authentication, which basically indicates that the user successfully logged in. If they didn't, uh, then this uh, wasn't going to be present in the response. And then the request would actually be treated as a failure. So we know that that was actually failing. So in this particular case, as you can see, I'm actually specifying something that should not exist because um, in our response, we won't have this underscore one, two, three, four, two, three. And so I would expect this particular test to actually fail. So let's actually validate it real quick. So I'll just uh, type in BZT and then I'll type in login and make sure it's a YML file that we have open and then press enter. Now, what you'll start seeing is uh, once it actually comes up, it will start failing some of the requests. So let's take a look real quick. So as you can see, we have uh, hundreds of requests executing and they're green, which indicates that it's successful. But you also see some of them that are failing. And that's because you can see on the bottom here, um, the text that's expected um, is actually not coming back. So you can see that um, 
you know, we still have 50 users executing, but some of the tests are uh, not uh, producing the results we're looking for. So we can let this test actually complete. And then once this completes, we should be able to go in and adjust our test and rerun it, to make sure everything is working correctly. And this way you can actually always make sure that as part of your activity of developing your application, you're making sure that you're running this test. And you can even automate this to say, go kick off a series of these uh, tests using Torres as soon as you actually uh, make the necessary change. And then this will give you the results saying that something is actually failing. So I've gone ahead and removed that underscore um, and then that other number that we know is invalid. So we should be able to just simply go back here, rerun the test, and make sure that now we're getting all successful results. So the console came up. And uh, now you can see that you're not getting any uh, any failures here. So, um, and we're, we're not getting any errors reported, and um, all of the requests are actually succeeding. So this is just one example. Now, where uh, I don't actually uh, see th this tool being used very much is when you're trying to do some comparison. Now, this tool is great in terms of doing a very quick and dirty uh, visual uh, test to make sure that you understand that something is wrong. But where, to me, this tool doesn't really appeal is this user interface here doesn't really give you the view of uh, how well your application is responding. And this is where I think uh, JMeter and some of the plugins that it has built into it out of the box actually become helpful. Um, and I'll show you that real quick as well. So let's see this. So this test completed. Uh, one thing I'll show you real quick is this is related to you know the benefit of using JMeter uh, for the other reporting is you can see that the actual sample count we had is 13,000. We had zero failures, and then the latency uh, was fairly small. So we can see that 90th percentile is actually 0.844 uh, seconds. Uh, so 90% of the requests were landing in that response time frame. Now, uh, where you can actually get the benefit of using something like JMeter is it has some of the uh, plugins for reporting purposes. So as an example, I have a transactions per second, hits per second, and response latency over time. So if I go ahead and run this, you'll actually see a, a graphical representation, which you can uh, use not only, to me this is more appealing uh, in terms of actually even showing you uh, most of your requests that, that show up on the bottom here actually succeeding really fast. And then you can visually see right away that one of the requests has actually taken a significant amount of time compared to the other ones. And by simply looking at the color coding, you can see exactly which one that is. And then you can start drilling into it. So we can see that the specific one that uh, is actually having a problem here uh, is this one right here. Now, what does that mean? Now, we might actually have some kind of a performance problem that we can start looking at from an application perspective. So imagine that you're writing a piece of code and all you ran this particular test and all of a sudden you see a spike in the response times it, it you know started responding much slower or in a other uh, way if it starts responding faster you either have missing functionality or you did some amazing improvements in your application and that's what you were looking for so let me show you uh, specifically what I'm going to do here. So, you know, as you can see, we also are seeing that we have about 90 transactions, uh, at least it's peaking around 90 transactions. And then hits per second, we're hovering roughly around 1,000 hits per second. So the test is actually uh, concluding, and we should be able to uh, take a look at our application now. So what do we have in our code? So let me open up. Uh, my solution real quick and I've actually introduced uh, a bit of code that is actually resulting in this kind of behavior so uh, this is kind of a, a simulation of a problematic uh, piece of code that somebody might have written but it gives you a way to be able to show how the tool can actually benefit uh, you when you're looking at a graphical interface so uh, in this particular example when the user actually navigates to the home page here um, they actually um, 
get to see the username. So if the user actually logs in by going to profile and they uh, type in their credentials and then go to the home page, you can see that uh, we actually get the currently logged in user information. And then if we uh, try to click home, uh, you can see that the, it, the page is reloading and keeps the data. If we hit log out and then go back, you can see it's actually working pretty quickly. So the reason for that is because I've added this um, random sleep timer. So let me go ahead and actually kill that from here. And I'm going to redeploy our application into the service fabric cluster real quick. And since this is a remote uh, cluster, uh, instead of me updating the version number all the time and waiting for the upgrade process to complete, I find it easier to just redeploy the application completely. So I'll go ahead and right click, go to publish. I select the profile that I want to publish to, and then hit publish. And uh, once this publishes, uh, I'll uh, get back to actually uh, showing you the JMeter application itself. So let's give it a moment. Okay, so as you can see, the application actually started back up. So we're able to uh, click the profile and uh, we can go ahead and log in and go to the home page. And you can see that after I took out that uh, random sleep timer, clicking on the home page now actually loads uh, quite a bit faster. But um, it, it's all uh, perception and we don't have actual numbers. And the way you actually get the actual numbers is you can rerun the JMeter test. Now I can go ahead and rerun this test here real quick. And let's go ahead and do that. And uh, I guess uh, unless the, the only way for you to actually tell here that uh, the application is behaving much better is that if you know to look for specific things, which to me, uh, makes it a little bit harder for people who are not familiar with this tool or coming in trying to do performance testing in general as part of the development process. But um, if you remember when we ran this test last, uh, we were actually getting roughly around 200 uh, hits per second. Now in this particular test, we're now seeing four times that amount, uh, or actually not four times, six times that amount, or if not seven. So uh, you can see it's going up to almost 1,400 uh, requests and responses, as well as the latency is actually uh, quite a bit uh, lower. So once this test actually completes, you'll be able to see um, the, the summary statistics, and we'll take a look at them to see how many total requests we actually received as part of our test here. So uh, let's take a look at that. So in here, we now are seeing instead of uh, 10,000 or 11 or 13,000 uh, requests, you'll see that we have 82,000 requests. And if I was to run this again, most likely I'll actually get a slightly higher number because um, the, the actual uh, service driver cluster is now warmed up and should be able to respond uh, quicker. You can also see that the latency is significantly reduced. So we're seeing that our application is actually behaving much better. And in fact, it's uh, 10 times uh, lower latency that we saw in our prior test. But again, it's not very visual, so it's kind of uh, harder to see. Now, what you could do here is when you're making these kind of changes, uh, without clearing the JMeter test, I can simply rerun this. So let's take a look. And because we actually have a historical view of this, depending on how fast your deployment process is, you can actually run these tests and see visually really easily you know, how your application is doing. So as you can see, uh, in our first iteration of the test, we were getting a peak of a thousand uh, hits per second. And then once we fix that application code, uh, we actually see that we're getting uh, over 4,500 hits per second. And uh, depending on how many times you run this, um, I've seen it actually uh, go over 5,000 hits per second as well. And then when we go to the transactions per second, you can also see that before we used to get roughly around 900 trans or 90 transactions. 
and then here we're getting uh, almost 450 transactions. So we've significantly improved our application response uh, response times. And then when we go to the response latency over over time, we'll actually see that the thing that was actually having the worst latency, which is this uh, UI or our homepage uh, application itself, or the, the actual index page of our application. Um, you can see now the actual latency has dropped significantly and it's in line with the rest of the actual application uh, pages as well. And you can see that uh, the tool is performing much, much better now. So using a tool like this, um, I think is where the benefit is. Now, one other great benefit of a tool like Tor is it's actually something that uh, is written by and, and maintained by uh, a company called uh, Blaze Meter. So if we go and search for Blaze Meter, this is uh, JMeter and performance testing for uh, DevOps type organizations. Now, what Blaze Meter does is it gives you the ability to actually uh, use cloud-based resources to actually perform testing. This is not a sponsored video of any kind, but uh, I just wanted to show you kind of the, the true benefit of using something like Taurus. Uh, and the reason for that is because they figured out how to actually allow you to just simply specify how many users do you want to try to uh, um, use in order to generate the load on your application, especially if it's publicly facing. And uh, they figured out how to actually make that uh, fully functional where it uh, aggregates all of the statistics, all of the summary of the data, and then it does things like actually uh, putting it up in a dash, nice to see dashboard, uh, similar to what the JMeter uh, dashboard looks like here. Um, the only downside of this dashboard is that if you actually have distributed testing, it doesn't actually summarize it across all the nodes. But that's the downside, and I believe that's the sweet spot of uh, Taurus and how uh, Blaze Meter is looking for people to actually use the tool. So um, you can actually use this and then it gives you nice dashboards. If you can actually, uh, if you create an account with them, they also give you real time statistics. So you can actually point it to the Blaze Meter reporting website. And um, there's even a free tier where you can basically just uh, look at the statistics live if you're okay with sharing that kind of information with a, a third party vendor. So um, that's just a little bit about uh, Taurus itself as an application. And there's a lot more um, documentation on their website that explains to you how to use some of the execution settings. So for example, you have uh, JMeter, they have Selenium, JUnit, and a few other ones that are available. And uh, another cool thing that they have is the ability to actually log to something like Elasticsearch which allows you to then, um, actually, I'm not sure if this allows it to uh, do, I believe actually JMeter itself uh, has a plugin here for uh, Elasticsearch. Let's take a look real quick here. Yeah, so uh, JMeter itself actually has a backend listener, which allows you to actually log your information into, um, into a backend, uh, non-sql type data store which uh, can be used then to do dashboards as well so that's just another way that you can actually uh, pull the information together send it off to a, a centralized database uh, engine that allows you to then do reporting so um, there's a few tools that are available for you uh, for doing load testing there's other tools like um, uh, vsts or visual studio team services um, performance testing that is part of Microsoft's tooling that you can use for load testing as well. So, and some of those options are paid, some of these options are free. So, depending on your needs uh, and then how much time you want to invest into it, uh, you can use these tools for the load testing purposes. Hopefully, this uh, video was useful for you. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead, go ahead and leave your feedback in the comments uh, section below. And um, hopefully you can actually make it useful for your software development purposes. And um, I'll talk to you, I guess, in the next video.